Blog Talk Radio. can't keep it to myself. It's just like fire. Fire. Shut up in my bones and if I try to hold it in, I'll fool around and hurt myself. Welcome to fire, y'all. Praise the Lord and we give him our highest praise. Welcome to fire, the gospel experience that is certainly dedicated to honoring the true and only living creator God. Now is the time, beloved, to let our minds, bodies, and souls be renewed and refreshed in our relationship with our great, wonderful, and magnificent God, our Father. And there are not enough words in the human vocabulary or language to be able to express the joy, the great blessing, the honor that we have to be able to give God His praise for his precious, beautiful son, our Prince of Peace, our wonderful Messiah, Redeemer, and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Right here on this fire gospel experience, Jesus the Christ is unashamedly, unequivocally, and unapologetically, I might add, declared to be the only Redeemer, y'all. He's the only acceptable Lamb of God. I promise you, he is God of very God. He is the only chosen one with the keys of life, death, hell, the grave, and to our beautiful eternal life. He's our only hope and light for this lost, dark, 
and dying world that we're living in. Blessings again to each and every one of you. I'm your purpose uh, and power-driven host, Ron E. Jefferson. And I'm here to bring you the most uplifting spiritual inspirations as well as some of the most soul-anointed gospel music that has ever been made, y'all, and ever been played. Fire, fire, fire! The gospel experience will light ignite. And then fan those flames that's in your spirit, man, woman, boy, girl, because I'm trying to tell you, God wants us to be victorious believers in Jesus Christ. And we have to appreciate the fact that God is not a respecter of person, y'all. Mm-mm. He's just looking for a humble heart to worship and fellowship with him in spirit and in truth. We will be considering for your spiritual nutrition from the book of First Samuel, chapter 8, verses 7 and 8, where we read the Almighty One is discussing truth with his prophet Samuel. How that what Samuel perceives as rejection on him is actually rejection towards God. Do we feel so connected with the Almighty One that we feel what he would feel? Have we truly aligned ourselves with that affectionate side of God where our hearts are truly in his holy hand? Well, we're going to be talking about rejection. Oh, my God. Yeah, rejection. The Bible declares that our Lord Jesus came into his own, and y'all know the rest, his own received him not. Amen. We've all experienced rejection, but have we as Christian believers identify ourselves to an intimate level where we can say, God, what hurts you hurts me. Amen. We always talk about God, I'm hurt, come fix me. But have we stewarded ourselves enough in the word of God to where our hearts become his heart, where our minds become his mind. And just like our Lord Jesus prayed in John 17, That there becomes a soul oneness where we become an extension of who God is through his body. Because he is the head. He is the ruler. He is the king. My special guest is here. Lord Jesus, we're going to talk about rejection. My special guest is here. Awesome, amazing woman of God, gospel artist, Daphne M. Hilton is here. And I'm telling you, she's waiting in the wings, and I know she's bust, bust wide open with some revelation and some truth and some testimony that's going to encourage every single one of us to go higher in God. And then later on in the broadcast, guess what, y'all? We're going to shine my artist spotlight on gospel artist, woman of God, Kimberly Jackson. She's back, and y'all know that fireball, she's going to bring it, and I can't wait. I am just so happy to be back with y'all again on this Fire gospel experience. It's such a blessing to be here, y'all. So listen, call a family member, call a friend, call a co-worker, a neighbor. Somebody's in your spirit right now. Let them know. Brother Ron E. Jefferson is back on the airways to give God his just to praise, honor him <laughs> with the utmost from head to toe. And to encourage you people listening to this broadcast right now so that you can strive to be everything that God created and called and destined you to be. We're here talking about purpose, y'all. We're here talking about eternal connection with our God so that while we're here on this earth, everything that God has placed in our hands will turn into something beautiful, something wonderful, something that will bring God glory and just give more credibility and fruitfulness to your service. As a born again disciple of our Lord Jesus Christ We've already had prayer We are so grateful Holy Spirit God For you stepping into our lives and taking over So have your way Thank you for lighting the fuse That's going to set the internet and the radio airwaves Right now on Holy Ghost Sanctified Fire, fire, fire
My God, my God, are you one of the ones that can truly testify? Stand up wherever you are and let everyone know from deep down in your spirit that you know we serve a God that is not only willing to bless, to provide, to keep, to cleanse, to recover, to restore us, but he is able to do it. Thank you, man of God, Brian Dunlap, and one purpose because I I'm certainly chiming in with my amens on that one right there. God has done so many wonderful things for me. Y'all think I'm making stuff up if I start testifying, but I'm here to tell y'all as a living witness that God has lit this fire inside of my soul as a born-again, redeemed child of God, having gone through many, many ups and downs, dark valleys, backslid in my faith, only to be so humbled by my decision that I had to do like the prodigal son and say, God, I'm not even worthy, but if you just allow me a space over here, I'll be satisfied with that. And what God did is he gave me a new role. He put a ring on my finger. He even celebrated like the prodigal son of the return of myself. And I am only one of a vast number of God knows how many of us that have waned in our faith, lost our way, directions were skewered, our faith was at a bare minimum, all we had was that mustard seed of faith, and I'm here to tell y'all that even when we may have backslid in our faith, it's that mustard seed of faith that keeps us from going over the edge of the lost, of the unredeemable, that mustard seed of faith, well, deep down in our soul, no matter how wearisome we have allowed ourselves to become will sustain us and pull us back into the good graces of God. Thank you, man of God. Brian, you left in one purpose because you started this fire gospel experience all just right, just right. My special guest is here, y'all, and I'm here to tell y'all how happy and excited I am to have this multi-award winning international recording artist, native of Miami, Florida, and has made Atlanta, Georgia, her hub to expand her ministry and artistry. Being the daughter of parents who were deeply rooted in the church and were recording artists in their own time, she had the privilege of being surrounded by music and the industry all of her young life. What a blessing that had to be. She has shared the stage with many gospel greats as well as provided background vocals for Dorinda Clark Cole, my homegirl from Detroit, and Vanessa Bell Armstrong, I believe she's my homegirl from Detroit too, just to name a few. Along with the Atlanta Gospel Artist Hub, she proudly sang with Dirk Cheney and the Chosen Aggregation, Derek Starks and Friends, David Walker and High Praise, and the Greater Georgia Gospel Music Workshop Choir. She has appeared on several TV broadcast shows. Come on now. Sharing her gift with the world and her songs have been featured on two different SAG film soundtracks. She was awarded the Gospel Choice Music Artist of the Year in 2019. She's also a business executive outside of being an artist, y'all. Multi-talented sister, indeed, indeed. She is one of the CEOs of Blue Mile Music Consultants, LLC, a member of the Contemporary Adult Division of the Gospel Music Workshop of America, a SAGMA SAGMA member of the Stellar Gospel Music Awards, and now serves on the board of the Gospel Choice Music Awards. That's just to name a few, y'all. <laughs> she is also the founder of her nonprofit organization, Daddy's Girls of Destiny. She is one of the co hosts also of the platform Conversations with Blue Mile, which airs on Facebook, YouTube, and the On Point TV Network, and we'll be discussing that platform as well. She's a songwriter, vocal producer, technician, youth minister, and mentor amongst many, many other talents. She is currently being played on radio and music and is available, available for download and streaming. And I'm just believing she's going to be available for your revival, your women's retreat, your youth ministry event or whatever it is you got going on. So without any further ado, my pleasure to present gospel artist, woman of God, Daphne M. Hilton. 
to fire the gospel in Syria. <laughs> <laughs> Come on in the room. Ooh, woman, are you God. talking about Come me? Are you are you talking about me? That's a lie. <laughs> the one and only, yes, ma'am. Well, you've been busy I've in been, Jesus. How you doing? How you I, doing? Yes, I have. I'm wonderful. Listen, um, while I was listening to a pastor, I, this resonates with me all the time. He said, "When you're when you're doing it, you don't see it." You're just all don't about see. the purpose. You don't even pay attention yeah. to the other people on the outside looking you at don't. it, and they see it, and but we never see it. That's amazing to me. It's like, Amen. man, I wrote that. That's the bio. My goodness. Yes, I ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Lord. That's true. Yeah. We, we, we love you for loving the Lord. And if you don't mind, let me deviate real quick because I have to go back because I get so caught up in the joy of the Lord and focus in on ministry work and uh, my special guest, such as yourself. I have to go back and thank all of the beautiful people that wish me a happy, blessed birthday on November 17th. Yeah. I, I, I thank y'all. I thank y'all. I appreciate y'all. God has blessed me to be 62 years young. And I tell Amen. y'all, that's not how old, I tell y'all that's not how old I am. That's just how long I've been here. Because the Bible is true. The Bible says that God will retain our youth as the eagle flies upward. And I'm telling y'all right now, I feel the strength of my youth. Now, don't get me wrong. I still got Epsom salt. I tell y'all that all the time. <laughs> I, still, I, still, I still got Absorbing Junior. Woo, I went way back on that one. But what I'm telling y'all is God is blessing us throughout our years. Let me say this, and I want you to start sharing about your story. There are two saints of God, Joshua and Caleb. There were the two spies that came back when they spied out the land. They gave the good report. The Bible declares that that man, Caleb, we know about Joshua. He led the children of Israel further on into the promised land. But that man, Caleb, he was 80 years old, still swinging a battle axe on the front line. And I said, Lord, if you don't mind, I would like to have some of that strength that Caleb had. Absolutely. And guess what, y'all? Guess what, y'all? He's still doing that. God is a promise keeper, woman of God. Isn't he? Isn't he? Yes, he is. <laughs> yes, he is. When I tell you, he is a promise keeper, y'all. I like I, My daddy is 84 years old. He's still jumping on tables, preaching. He's still doing push-ups in the okay. morning. He still takes his walk. And he's 84 Thank years you. old. I said, Lord, I want to be like that. That's what I'm talking about. Amen. Woman of God, I'm just so excited and happy. I've told y'all, listen, y'all. One of the joys that I have is when I do my pre-show chat with my special guest before we go live, I'm like a coach. I'm like, man, let me get this person hyped up and ready. I don't know what they're doing, but I want to put them in the spirit. And Lady Daphne, it just gives me such a joy when I feel that spirit rise up in you all because I'm building y'all up and y'all receiving it because we get ready to come on this fire gospel experience and honor and praise God with some sincere praise. We're not here for fabrication. Absolutely. We're not trying to put on we're not here to put on no show. This is who we are. See, I'll do this in my house all by myself. I'll be in my car praising God. Just like they said, if you can't praise God in private, you ain't doing nothing putting on a show in public. Woman of God That's it. It's a it's a pleasure to have you here. I was getting excited here and you get excited. I want you to continue to let that excitement flow through you as you give your testimony. But right now, if you'd be so kind, would you just share with us, what was your life like at the point in time when you decided to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior? Tell us about that. Hmm. That's interesting that you say that. And people, we get this question a lot. And it's amazing because our acknowledgement of him is so different from us, him knowing us or us having those interactions with him. So okay. I can say this. When This is what my mom used to say, because we've always been in the church. And she said, well, that's mm. you prayed all the time, even when you was little. Mm. You know, yeah, as a kid, yeah. you don't look at it like, you don't look at it like that. She said, you will always be in a room talking to God. No, have You'd be outside playing by yourself, talking to God. She said, and she's always knew that there was a call on your life. She said, because you've always had that communication with God. Mm. And you'd never think about it like that. When I was, as I was going through high school, well, middle school, elementary school, middle school, high school, 
My best friend, she said, well, Dr., you always say, well, you know, we need to pray about it first. Well, y'all, we mm-hmm. need to just pray. She said, you always yeah. put prayer first. I'm like, really? I don't remember that. But mm-hmm. my, true, my true acknowledgement of God, for me, my true acknowledgement of God was when I was about 13 years old. Okay. That was, that was my true acknowledgement of God. And then my experience with the dousing of the Holy Spirit, I was about 15 years old. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was just amazing. But that's why when, when people ask that question, it's like, hmm. Mm-hmm. Because even as young kids, little kids, mm-hmm. there is a spirit connection between us and the Holy Father. Absolutely. And we don't even, sometimes we don't even realize that's what keeps us comfort. That's what keeps us protected and comfort in our, in our innocence. Jeez. So I've been knowing the Lord. <laughs> I've been knowing the Lord. All whole my life. But I've acknowledged him that I can recollect when I was about 13 years old. Mm. Knowing truly, I know God. Mm-hmm. The Bible declares in Proverbs 22 and 6 Woman of God That if we train up a child in the way that he should He should go Teaching him to seek God's wisdom And will for his abilities and talents I'm reading from the Amplified Version Bible That I love so much Because it just goes into so Me much too. clarity Even when he is old He will not depart from it that Absolutely. connection that you talk about, woman of God, is that soul of a child before it gets contaminated with too much secularism, right? With too much self will. Absolutely. Is God saying, I'm going to connect with you, and from this point on, it's up to you if you want to keep that connection going. Stay connected. That's so. good. That's good. You said I a lot. Said so. That was a mm-hmm. whole bunch that's, right there. That's, it's that's, our that's, choice that's, that's that's almost connected. A, that's that's almost a sermon right there, woman of God. I'm that you. is. <laughs> it's our choice. So I, it, it's our choice, but woman of God, as you continue to grow, you became more aware of the spiritual connection of God. And it became evident because what you realize is that singing has something to do with your relationship. Now, I want you to talk about that because, see, everybody don't sing. I can go now. Swing low. We okay. <laughs> coming for to carry okay, me home. I was in the choir, <laughs> but okay. everybody don't now You sing. brought it back. You took it way back. You took it like way everybody back. Everybody don't. Every I, well, you know, it's just in me. Everybody don't preach. Everybody don't teach. But there is something unique in every single believer that they must discover. We are not living in times, woman of God, where the saved, sanctified children of God need to be sitting on the bench. Mm-hmm. I came ready today. <laughs> Tell us about how, when you started discovering that your particular gift had something to do with your destiny in Jesus, help help us put those pieces together so that somebody that's still searching for their calling in the body of Christ can hear what you share and apply it to them. That's amazing because I love it. I knew this was going to be a great conversation. I already knew that. And I told you that um, before yep. on our yep. free conversation. Yep. Um, you did. It's already, I feel like it's already, it's in you. And mm-hmm. the, the authenticity of it is in you. A lot of times okay. as we get older and we move through life, we don't even realize it. Our our minds are shaped because of the world. We said uh, born in this world. No, uh uh, born in the sea No, Jesus, I can't think now Well, shaped in, shaped in iniquity And what's the scripture says um, When we're born into this world We're shaped in the iniquities of this world uh-huh. And I think mm-hmm. sometimes our gift um, Or the talent Is construed or moved side Or reshaped Because of yeah. um, our experiences Singing for me Has always been an outlet has always, mm-hmm. Even as a little kid, you know, singing for me has always been that outlet. It's always been that expression um, of the feelings that I've had on the inside. Now, I've always started out in gospel music, 
You know, you know, yeah. we had the star search back then, and you know, I went mm, to a performance art school back then. So, well, you're gonna get on star search, Daphne. You're gonna be the next big star of our family, mm. yada yada yada. Um, as I was young, when I was younger, you know, I was seeing, you know, the little, you know, Children's Day program every year, that kind of stuff. And then I got in a little choir, and you know, but I've always been in music, and also too, being raised in an environment where is saturated with music on both ends, mm. from gospel okay. to R and B. My whole life has been saturated with music. I did not want to sing. Mm. I was. I told my mom, I don't wow. want to do that. Wow. I want to be a dancer. I don't want to <laughs> sing because my okay. mommy sing, my daddy sing, my uncle yeah. sing. Yeah. You know, they were part yeah. of these bands and my mom and daddy's bands and blah blah. blah. I don't want to do that. But I loved okay, I music. You. I loved music. I wanted to be a dancer, not a singer. Because you wanted you, your own you industry. wanted your own identity, that's all. Absolutely. Absolutely. But lo and behold, mm-hmm. I could not let the singing go. I was singing in my room. I was singing mm. with my small family. I didn't want to be out there being a minstrel for God. I didn't want to do that. Yeah. First of all, I didn't yeah. understand what it was, but I saw how how my mom and dad and my family's always out and busy and this and this and this. I didn't want to do that. I wanted to dance. That's all I wanted yeah, to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just jump to <laughs> I, I could it. jump to the music, but I didn't want to sing to the music. <laughs> but lo and behold, as I got older and I would see myself just in my room just singing. And I'll never forget this guy by the name of Dwayne Ingram. He passed away now. He was my one of my mentors um, of the Ingram Gospel Singers. I was 13 years old. He said, hey, um, I want your daughter to come and sing with us. Mm. And my mom said, well, I think she's too young because they were already recording and they were in their 20s and 30s. My mom wow. said, I think she's too young. No, I will take care of her. I had, she has a gift on her. So I started singing when they were the youngest in that choir. Then my okay. brother came about. 13 and 15. We both hanging out with these grown folks. And he said, there's something special about your child. Mm -hmm. And my mom was like, okay, I trust you. And as I got, as as God kept dealing with me, with my music, and I'm like, you know what? I want to do this. And the reason I tell you this, and I know it was my purpose because the reason I did not want to do it because I was rebelling against Singing because, like you said, I wanted my own identity. Uh-huh. Not realizing I could still have my own identity even as a singer in this That's it, right there. Singers. Come on. I could still have my own identity. So my purpose was already being woven mm-hmm. throughout this journey that I thought I was leading up to be a dancer. That I was already mm-hmm. orchestrating putting people in my life, putting people in my mom's life, putting people around me saying, okay, okay, well, I can help her do this. I can help her do this. Let's move her in this area. And I'm like, oh, God, I don't, I always rebel. I don't want to do this. But it's always, (laughs) I don't want to do it. You're going to do it anyway because you're my child and you're going to do it. I don't want to do it. Okay. It's amazing how, um, it it reminds me of, um, um, What's his name? Went to Nineveh. Um, and God told him to go to Nineveh. He didn't want to jump in the well. Uh-huh. Yeah. It reminds yeah. me, it reminds me of um, Jonah. And Jonah was like, I'm not doing this. And God said, mm. I know I told you to go this way. And you're still going this yeah. way. And he said, I don't want to do that. He admitted Jesus. that he was too bad. I don't want to go that way. He, he, was he ended up in that belly. He was serious about that thing. He ended up in that belly. But God was still orchestrating. He was still orchestrating it, still orchestrating it. And I've ended up in some belly. Okay. Seeing God's yeah. hand. Talk about seeing that. Seeing God's hand move. Yeah. Seeing God's hand mm-hmm. move in my life. It's like, okay, yeah. God, let me just go on and do this. Because mm. every time when you, you, know, you try to do something the opposite, you know, I'm trying to dance. 
but I couldn't do all of the things that I thought I could do, having injuries, walking off the stage because I was so angry because things didn't work out the way it's supposed to have work out, walking off in the middle yeah. of the stage, like middle of the routine. I don't want to do this yeah, yeah. because this is not who God called you to do this. He didn't call you to do this, Daphne. He called you to open up your mouth and be a mistress for him. Mm-hmm. And as I got older, I was still in high school. As I got older, going through this journey, young, God started me really, really young. As I um, was in high school and I got into performing art and I was able to do all three. My singing mm-hmm. ability, ability yeah. outweighed every other aspect of the performing arts. Okay, That's when I knew I was supposed to be singing. Listen to this woman of God because, oh, Jesus, I felt that right there. Because I was just getting ready to ask you because I already know. <laughs> you up there giving God hot praise and got caught up in the spirit. I already seen you dancing. Not quite like David did. You kept your clothes on, but you was standing and you was jumping and you was dancing just like you wanted to. It's just not in the way that you thought you would. I know you dance Absolutely. when you get up on that stage. I know you praise dance. I know you get the hallelujah feet and you can't help yourself. That comes with submission to Holy Absolutely. God's leading. It comes with submission. I was just sharing with somebody uh, just earlier. I said, don't you know that after salvation, the greatest gift that is that we give to God is our free will. God Mm -hmm. created us with a free will and after we're saved what we do then is we go to a level of submission and we say you know what God, here's my mind. He said give me your mind, I want your spirit, Mm -hmm. I want your body, I want Mm -hmm. all, I want all of who you are, the three of parts me. of who you are, mind, body, and soul. I want, I All want that, me. but I don't want it forced. The Bible says if you pray to give God and you give it with your purpose, keep it. God don't want it like yes. that. It ain't even yes. about money. It's about your heart. And so what, I, mm-hmm. what I'm hearing, woman of God, is you saying that if we just open up our hearts. If we stop trying to hold on to self-will, wanting things to be my way, the way I want it to be, um, we'll find out that God has an even greater plan than what we could ever conceive of. Amen? That's his word. That's his word. He said, I know the plans. He said, Jeremiah twenty nine eleven. I know the plans I got for you, Daphne. I'm going to give you an expected end, a great future. But you got to trust oh, me and submit unto me and trust the orchestration I have in your life. Trust this. Trust what I've woven out just for you. Trust this. And mm-hmm. we, and you know, it's our built in our personalities and our, we're in, you know, um, we are products of our environment. You know, I was raised to be a go get. I was raised to have a, you know, have my own mind. So it's like, well, I don't want to do this. You know, I'm the one that's rebelling. No, I'm uh, going to do what I want to do. I'm doing Jesus. what I want to do. No, I don't want to do all that what y'all got going on over here. I'm going the opposite direction. But God slowly, humbly, and gently pushed me right on back to carry that mantle as an artist in the industry, just like mommy and daddy. I'm glad you said gentle because what we fail to realize sometimes is that we have an enemy, Satan, who is the enemy of our soul. The great Yeshua, Yahweh God, guess what? He is the lover. He is the lover of our soul. That's why we're yes, he is. and he is the groom. Because the intimacy of us and God, once that we are redeemed, God can bestow like never before. He just wants us to open ourselves up to him. And I'm gonna be honest with you, sometimes that's a, a long process or something because we have gotten in yeah. those sometimes before before we accepted Christ, we got habits that we still hold on to, still find some gratification out of. We have those clues. We have because we're in these flesh bodies. See, I want to talk about that in church. When we come to church, man, we're so sanctified and holy. You would think we never did nothing wrong. But yes. the matter is yes. we all have our challenges. 
And that's why, y'all, listen, my special guest, woman of God, Daphne M. Hilton, is saying she has crossed over from her own self-will so much so now that she had to make a song about it. She said, God, here I am. And I want you to have mm-hmm. all Oh, God, we need you. And I need somebody to know that we cannot make it without him. So, God, we give you all of us right now. I come to you with all of my mind, Lord. And I come to you uh, with all of my heart, Lord. And I come to you with my body. I present you, yes, for me. Everybody say, Are listening to fire the gospel explosion where the praises are going up and the worries are going away playing for you the best and the newest gospel music on the planet and the most inspiring encouragement under god's heaven keep tuning in and bless your family your friends and your co-workers by telling them about fire 
Amen, amen. That's right. Keep tuning in so that you can keep getting blessings. Keep getting blessings. Woman mm. of God, Daphne mm. M. Mm-hmm. Hilton just turned the degree of the heat on on this fire gospel experience, talking about all I heard you getting happy right there at the end when you were talking about mm. all mm. of me. Mm. I heard you. you started, the spirit mm. fell on you. You could have went like another minute and a half, but they said, okay, sister, so mm. let's see if we're going to cut it right there. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> Listen, woman of God, uh, while we were sharing before we went live on the air, I told you, I said, listen, if there's some things in your spirit, because I felt like it was, that you need to set free and get out of your spirit and share with us, I want you to feel free to do that. And you said, mm. and I said, yep, that's it right there. So, woman of God, listen, before we talk about about your broadcast, about your program platform that you um, are, uh, are making available to the people of God in your own inspirational way, Tell us, is there anything in particular that's in your spirit that you feel like you want to set free right now and share with us? If it is, I'm going to pass you the microphone. Y'all, I trust God. At the end of the song, he just confirmed it again. I trust you with my life, God. Mm -hmm. Amazing because Mm -hmm. listening to your testimony earlier today um, when we were talking in our pre-conversation, you said some Mm -hmm. things. how God delivers you from some things. And it's amazing because um, my, not my family, we went through that. Um, Mm. So many in my family. And that was a part of my family that a part of the things in my family, I never discussed. I never talked about um, almost, almost where it became blotted out, you know, little bits and pieces that I, Remember, remember, because um, this is so amazing, and I need to get off to get this, get this off my chest. Um, mm. um, my family, even though we love God, even though we were in a church, um, the era that I grew up in, you know, drugs and alcohol, it was very um, saturated as well in my yeah. family. Um, mm. More alcohol mm. on my dad's side, but drugs and alcohol on my mom's side. Music industry, music, musicians, singers, whatever. This is just what, what it was. And mm-hmm. I've seen the good and the bad. And it's amazing that when you was telling me your testimony, God had placed this, uh, this person in my life recently that God has delivered from drugs and alcohol. Amen. And Praise I did Lord. not know ah. how to, I didn't know how to receive it because that was okay. a part of my life I didn't even want to go back to. It almost right. made me afraid. Mm. Um, and I did not want to judge or uh, mm-hmm. have some type of uh, pre notions about this person because of that, because I yeah. know how it could affect the family. I know how yeah. it affected yeah. my yeah. family. It affected mm. me and my mom and my brothers personally. So um, it's amazing when you said that, when you told your testimony to me earlier, God, God. What he said again, do you trust me? I trust yes. God with my life. I trust <laughs> God with my life. I'm like, oh, my God. I said, Lord, now you knew I needed to hear Kieran's testimony. Okay. You knew I needed to hear his testimony. Mm-hmm. So I can be of, of service mm-hmm. to this Come person. On. Come on. Come on. Come on. You knew it, God. Because I was almost walking on eggshells. I was kind of, you know, putting a big old boulder in between, you know, the guy who's reaching out and trying to, um, you know, me ministering. Because I'm a minister. Yeah. I'm a minister. And it's like, oh, Lord, you know, what is this all about? Because, like I said earlier, it's almost like, you know how it happened, but it didn't happen. Mm Mm-hmm. That life, that life, whole lifestyle of my family and drugs and alcohol, it happened, but it didn't happen. But let me tell you how good God is. Um, okay. My uncle on sold it or was on it, like you said in the in the in the in the dope house. Now, um, chairman of the deacon board. Um, yep. All right. <laughs> You know, uh, servants, laymen's in the church. We've always been in the yeah. church, but really dedicated laymen's in the church. Oh. 
Nobody I cannot tell me God can't deliver you from that. I already know. I've seen it over and over and over and over again, but that was an area of my life I, ne- I didn't want to revisit. Okay. It was amazing that when you said that, I'm like, oh, my God. It's the truth. God, you are so awesome. I trust you with my life. Mm. Thank God for so now me I can be up. of a good. Now I can serve or be of good service to this individual that needs mm-hmm. ministering to. Amen, amen. I thank God for uh, allowing me the privilege to share a uh, 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 ever ready, present, relevant word because it is a fire that mm. is shut up in our bones that we are to exhale out into the dark world that we're living in so that they can feel the heat of the truth and mm. the light of our testimony. Our fire mm, is so mm, mm, mm. It has heat, you can't deny it, and it has light that sheds freedom in those dark places. It gives mm. people the opportunity of an option when they see us, who many have perceived is dead, and on on our way out, we are resurrected and made new even after we are born again. That's the beautiful redeeming power of God. Yes. That He don't He don't just He He He, he don't just make it a, a one time thing. Yes, we're born again spiritually, but if we need to be reborn in our mind, if we need to be reborn in our bodies, if we need to be reborn again in our thinking, guess what? God is able. It's continual. Amen. Amen. It's continual. Thank you. You you, you blessed us with that. Woman of God, Mm, listen, mm, mm, before mm. we get out of here, I'm just grateful for this platform that you have. What's about this platform that you are blessed to be the host of this, uh, the woman of God that shares this platform with you so that my listeners can become your viewers and your listeners. I ain't stingy. I share what God has blessed me with with somebody else. Come on, tell us about your platform. Well, um, first of all, I have a, um, I'm a co-CEO of a, a company called Conversations, with, uh, not Conversations, well, uh, that's called Blue Moon Music Consultants, and we have a podcast or platform that's called Conversations mm-hmm. with Blue Moon. What we do is we, we interview our peers and people that we meet that's doing great things in this industry. It doesn't mean if you're um, singing or not. It's just in the industry, in the entertainment yeah. industry. Um, it's not all gospel. It's people that that photographers that's just out there that's doing things, great things. People that are singers out there. People that that own, you know, that are CEOs of their award shows. People that have the podcasts and radio stations that's doing great things that we want to shed light on, you know. That's um, right. And God, like I told my business partner, um, Calandra Gant, that there is no there are no coincidences coincidences in the life of God. So in our journey with God, there are no coincidences. When we meet people, it's something that needs to be said or something that they need to say to us. It's something that we're pulling or giving always. Yes. So we always continue to keep our ear to God and be lifelong learners when we're listening or talking to people. So that is what Conversations with Blue Mile is, and it actually started in the pandemic. We were home. Wow. Everybody was home. We didn't do nothing. We were just sitting there talking to people on the phone, blah, blah, blah watching all these different podcasts or just watching TV. And um, my business partner came and she said, you know, we need to do something because she's already experienced in these different podcasts. I was not. So she was like, I think we should come up with something. I said, okay, well, we'll figure it out. So we end up doing a conversation with Blue Mind. And I said, you know what? Let's just check on our peers, see how they're doing. So that's how it started. That's I was right. just checking on our peers. How are you holding up in the pandemic? That was <laughs> our I love it. How are you holding up in the pandemic? And everybody was okay. like, well, you know, we're just trying to do, 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 you know. And my, you know, since you can't go out and minister, you can't go out and get paid to sing. Um, right. How you holding up? You know, mm-hmm. and some people, this is this is what they do. Their whole living is to go sing. How you holding up? What do you need? Do you need us? You know, mm-hmm. we, we're here to help. So that's how mm-hmm. Conversation with Blue Mouth started. Amen. And uh, now, is this? Is this a regular broadcast so that my listeners can continue to support this? Yes. So, on Facebook, we are every other Tuesday at 8 p.m., Facebook and YouTube. On on, on the On Point Network channel, it's On Demand. 
So all okay. of our platforms, all of the episodes are there. I think we're going mm-hmm. to, we're already in uh, season two. So I think we're about to go into season three. Um, so okay. and you could just on demand, you can stream it on demand. Uh, just download the um, On Point Network um, right, app man. on Roku and you can just stream us and watch. You can binge watch our series. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, 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 man, well, I'm going to tell you what. I'm going to tell you what. It's all about uh, success sometimes can truly be measured by longevity. And it's one thing to put a thing together because that takes dedication and sacrifice and work. Yes. But it takes even more dedication and sacrifice and work to let that work continue. People don't realize yeah. things just don't materialize just because we set our minds to it. Guess what? You might have to get your hands dirty and put some back motion into it and everything. You got to so. put the back <laughs> in it. <laughs> what, uh, it's called listen, grunge just, work. It's called grunge work. <laughs> what, what, what you got to get I'm down in the trenches. You got to get down there with it sometimes. Amen. Just like you know, I said, he said, I got a sword in one hand and I got a, a tool and a bricklaying piece in the other hand. I'm working and watching. So we have, How to, be about multi- that? We have to be multifaceted when we are builders. And see, the principles that I try to do. Uh, that I try to bring out in my broadcast is because we are not just church goers. We have to go beyond that. Church is just the beginning. Salvation Absolutely. and accepting Jesus Christ is just the beginning. Once we get into the body of Christ, now it's time to find your calling, your place in the body, and get busy. And if you get tired, guess what? God says, just like man of God, Brian Dillon, said, and purpose. He said, God is willing to give you strength. And guess what? He's able to do that too, woman of God. So what I'm going to do is go on YouTube, go on YouTube or share your conversations, your platform, and put page so that I can kind of spread you around to the people that I know. And uh, I'm looking forward to you uh, considering being on this uh, 2023 Pools Gospel Carnival Cruise that's going to be coming up August the 31st through September the 4th in 2023. We're going to be looking for gospel artists to come in for four or five days. We're going to be on the ocean giving God praise. We're going to turn the whole island of the Bahamas out with some Jesus and then come back and be lit like never before. I uh, love I it. appreciate you. I appreciate you. I'll be in touch with you. I'm going to give you that information. If you go, if you can make it, we want you to be there and minister all out in the beautiful name of Absolutely. Jesus. Absolutely. That is, that's awesome. And, you know, that's the next big thing now, too, the cruises. I mean, that, 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 that's, that's yeah. a big deal right now. It's going it's over, really over, over the water sharing the gospel. Amen, amen. He said, take this gospel message wherever you go. He said, take it to Jerusalem and then Judea and then to the other parts of the earth. That means your neighborhood, your surroundings, and then cross however many boundaries the Lord allows you the privilege and resources to do so. Well, Absolutely. Listen, I'm going to ask you to share any final words of wisdom. But you know, though, just because I said final words of wisdom, that don't mean we're going to collaboration. Do have an open door party to come back and visit with us and give us a praise report and definitely send us that anointed music so that we can give you some airplay. I'm blessed to be syndicated on five networks, so you're gonna get plenty, plenty of airplay and coverage through this platform. And I want you to know you're welcome. Any final words before you share your contact information in case somebody wanna book you, wants to come to the event, uh, uh and then uh where your music can be downloaded as well as all your social media outlets. Give us some words of wisdom before you Yeah, first I just wanna tell you thank you so much for this opportunity because, you know, people don't have to be um have to have you on their hearts. And my um mm-hmm. spiritual dad said people don't know how much people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. So I really That's do true. appreciate um, just you even um, allow me to come on your platform and share. Um, and now I have some new brothers and sisters out there. <laughs> That's right. You know, so I have some new brothers and sisters out there. So also, too, this is what I want to leave with whoever is listening. Be yourself. Be your authentic you. You know, nobody can, you know, to hear this all the time is a big cliche, but it's true. You can, you can't, can't nobody beat you being you. So be yourself. Your call on your life is the call on your life. You know, he said, you know, um, what is it? Many are um, 
uh, many are chosen, but few, no, many are called, but few are chosen. So in your right, right, in your thing that you do, you're chosen to do that for this time and this season. Yes. You know, yeah, you probably got a lot of other people that's doing what you're doing, but they're not doing it like you do it. So be that's okay right. with being chosen in that mm. place, in that area, and then it's time to do what God has called you to do. Because a lot of That's times we, we look, because we're so saturated, everything is so saturated right now. So just be okay where you are, because you're you're the one that's been chosen to do that. To do whatever that Amen. is that God asks for you to do. Amen. Powerful word. How can you be contacted for booking? Well, for booking, you can reach out at Daphne Hilton, Daphne, D A P H N E Y, Daphne with the Y, Hilton, like the Hilton Hotel at gmail.com for any type of information that you need or you can go please go to my website um, Daphne Hilton same thing um, and it's info at Daphne Hilton.com if you want to reach me through my website all my social media is Daphne D-A-P-H-N-E-Y Daphne with the Y Hilton like the Hilton Hotel all my social yeah. media is Daphne Hilton <laughs> <laughs> um, my music is Daphne Hilton If you just Google Daphne Hilton It's going to pop up So everything you need to know about me Just Google me Just Google the one You heard her y'all yep. Sister said, just, just Google me and, and, and you'll find me You'll see me Amen goes right there Absolutely. Oh, God, We appreciate you We appreciate you so much We love the Jesus that's well, in you Thank you so much Our, our prayer is that God will continue to just shine on you so much And bless you so much that it's just going to make you run and go tell somebody else. I promise you that's the truth. Absolutely. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, Mother of God. We appreciate you, Jesus. Looking for more wonderful things that God has for you. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Come back and see us soon, Woman of God. Yes, yes sir. M. Hilton. Look right here on the fire. Watch this. Amen. 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 We are just blessed to have all of you blessed people of God here with us. You anointed people of God. This is the invitation that if I have tagged you uh, on my Facebook promo for this particular broadcast or any broadcast, that means I'm looking for you to be my special guest. I'll just be tagging people just to be tagging folks. Man, I'm trying to catch you collaborate because, see, that's my ministry. That's my calling. God made a real play for me on what I need to be doing, and I'm about my father's business. That sounds familiar, though. It's the truth. I want y'all to know something now. Listen, it's a little bit early for me, normally, to be playing Christmas music. I mean, my goodness, we just got through with Thanksgiving. We got a whole nother month (laughs) before we even get to Christmas. So normally I, I like to wait. You know what I'm saying? I got my own reasons why I won't go into it. But uh, me and woman of God, Daphne and Hilton, we talked about it. And uh, because she was such a bright and shining light, y'all, I'm giving woman of God, Daphne M. Hilton, the privilege to break what is one of my normal protocols for Christmas because I like to wait until I can actually feel more of the Christmas holiday vibe in my spirit, right? And right now, I'm still vibing off of Thanksgiving, y'all. I'm still vibing off my birthday. Bless y'all. Thank y'all. But right now, I'm just going to give woman of God, Daphne M. Hilton, a privilege of breaking in the Christmas holidays with music that she sent, y'all, because it's a sleigh ride for Jesus. Let us not ever forget. That this Christmas holiday, Jesus is the reason. Yeah, we like chestnuts roasting on an open fire. We like all of that. And how about Santa Claus? I know he in there. It's about Jesus and his birth into the world. So while we're doing all of these other extra career activities, like sleigh ride, like woman of God, Daphne and Hilton about to take us on, let us always stay mindful of what the holy day, holy day, is really all about knowledge and gifts, which is what we do every day. So, come on, woman of God, Daphne M. Hilton, starting off this Christmas holiday season right here on Fire, the Gospel Experience. Yeah. Hallelujah.
particular name, Woman of God, Calandra Gant. Uh, I'm contacted uh, ASAP so I could bring her on because I love to hear how the people of God are connected. And when you say in her name, I was like, man, let me go and play some more of her music so that I can bundle this thing up. You know how they always trying to get us to bundle our life insurance and our auto insurance and our home insurance together? I'm going to take that principal woman of God, and I'm going to bundle up the people of God and make this thing more powerful. How about that? <laughs> You're telling that successful experience. We're about to shine our artist spotlight on a woman of God that is doing some mighty, beautiful things in Jesus, y'all. This is the act of power, even more so than when we first started. This woman of God, I'm here to tell y'all, she was born and raised in Houston, Texas. Her gift as a gospel singer gave her the opportunity to be added to other churches to share her gift with others. And then touched many lives from Louisiana, Texas, and during the pandemic, 2020, she was privileged, y'all, to sing on Instagram live with Karen Clark Shears. Now, the ultimate dream and passion of her is to become a successful gospel artist who touches and changes the lives of many people all over the world. And with the 32 years of experience she has from teaching other choirs music, being, I didn't know that, praise and worship leader and praying vocalist, she's ready to live her dream until God says that her time here on earth is over. However, during her life, she had to go through several personal situations as a single mother with a teenage daughter. But her love and support of several persons of her mother and father, they never, ever gave up on her. And after 11 years of fighting all social media, the worst depression, let's talk about that. She finally had the courage to record her first single, Tired which is her personal testimony of what God has done in her life. So far, her music is being played on WESL Radio and Chuck Spearman, also with Dalton Anderson of WCHI FM New York, 
Andre Carter of Synergy One Radio, Mia Network, KDOM with Randall Kane, and it has been well received in the UK and the Caribbean, I don't doubt, just to name a few. Also, she was featured on Boys Houston Magazine and MyHoustonGospel.com, and she just finished her first single release date in concert on November 20th. 21! Isn't that amazing? My special guest for this Shine Artist Spotlight is here, y'all, to bless us, talking about none other than my sister in Christ. Returning! It's been a while, but she's back, y'all. Talk about what we got, gospel artist Kimberly Jackson is here, y'all. Amen. 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 Back at Loving Jesus Still on Fire. How you doing, woman of God, Kimberly Jackson? <laughs> I'm good. Thank you for having me back. I'm glad to be back. I can feel you blushing through the phone. I'm so excited to have you back here with us, woman of God. Why don't you catch us up and tell us what's been going on with you? Oh, man. Um, <laughs> it's so many things that has occurred, that has happened since the last time we spoke. Um, I know the yeah, last yeah. time we spoke, I was just getting started. I was just getting ready. Um, I had just prepared and finished my first concert and just released my first single, Higher. And ever since mm. then, uh, God has literally taken me higher, <laughs> as the yes. song says. Um, yeah. We have been on Dr. Bobby Jones' Gospel this on. year on Come Impact on. Network, my first national yeah. television appearance, uh, and Beautiful. premiered it on live television. <laughs> um, and we also uh, did a stage play uh, by Annie mm-hmm. Johnson and ADW, AWJ Productions called Unfinished Business, my first stage okay. play which premiered wow. on Tubi TV what? this year. Um, yes. <laughs> and Amen. God Amen. allowed us to perform the song once again on mm-hmm. the play. And you'll get to okay. see that. Um, it's there now. Um, and it'll also premiere on Amazon Prime as well. Yeah. Um, and God has just been blessing us. We've just been doing different ministries, going from... San Antonio, from uh, Church, Texas, um, and mm. throughout the city of Houston, uh, God has opened this ministry, and we've been everywhere. Um, I just won uh, 2023 River Awards Female Artist of the Year. Um, okay. so, uh, shout out to Miss Pam Jones of River and Word. <laughs> yo, yo, yo. Um, five-time number five-time nominee of 2023 Rhythm and Gospel Awards. Um, wow. And I've also been nominated for Best Female Artist for the stage play I just did, um, which okay. the winner will be announced next month. So I'm excited. <laughs> We've been very busy. <laughs> and it sounds like you're on a roll, woman of God, a fantastic roll of God's favor and God's blessing on, our, on your life, which I know that you are quick to acknowledge that all of your success comes from God. But you did talk about some challenges that you have gone through that I would like for you to um, just share and speak about as comfortable as you choose, woman of God, and that's about depression. Because, see, there are some things that we Christians don't talk about. We get all the way honest, and we have to use discretion, we have to be selective, that people will look down on our um, faith. Well, they will think that we're in Potent and incompetent in some way that maybe we uh, have not arrived like we should have. So a lot of times we suffer in silence. So if you would please, and if you would like to just empower somebody by the victory that you obtained through going through depression, trusting God a little bit more, and then coming out stronger, better, wiser, like the man of God has sang about, Marvin Sapp, then I believe that God is the praise and the glory, but I also believe that someone can be helped just by the words that you love to share now. Yes, yes. So um, it was uh, in 20, uh, 2020. Um, I'll never forget that time in my life during the pandemic, um, being a single parent, uh, doing it on my own for a while. Um, it was just getting to the point where 
it was getting emotionally and mentally draining and overwhelming. Okay. Um, yeah. It's never easy being a single parent, uh, especially okay. of a daughter. <laughs> Okay. And so, okay. and also, yes, and also with that, um, going through discouragement as well, mm. you know, mm. I've been singing a long time and a lot of times when we get on live or we, you know, try to sing here and there, um, it can be discouraging when people don't support you. And so that's, that's hard as well. So with all of that going on, um, at one time, it causes you and it has caused me to, you know, and then death. We dealt with a lot of death in my family mm. as well. Yeah. Um, wow. Especially Come that on. year um, in yeah. 2020. Um, and even now, we still lost a lot of people. And so, with all of that going on at one time, it causes you to slip mm. into that depressive state. It causes yeah. you to just want to be in a room by yourself not want to mm. deal with anybody, not want to talk to anybody, and wanting to give up. Just sitting in my mm. closet saying to myself, I want to give up. I don't want to sing anymore because yeah. I want to support it. I don't want to do this and that. I don't feel like doing this and that because I'm struggling. I don't have the Ooh, help that I need or I don't have somebody stepping in, you know, to help me with my daughter, you know. So, you know, living on my own, uh, but not saying that I didn't have support of my parents being there for me. Um, but right, it, right. when you're in a place by yourself, you're on your own apartment, you're in your own, <laughs> it's difficult, it's, it's, you know, to handle it's it all on your yeah. own. Um, and, you know, with with the inflation and with all this stuff going on, you know, in 2020, the pandemic, was it was just terrible. You know, things yeah. were going up. Food going up, gas going up, Everything. rent going up, yeah. you know, and, yeah. and it's just difficult. And so I got to a place where I sat in my closet and I told God, I don't want to do this anymore. I don't want mm. to sing no more. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. I just wanted to give up on life, period. And I just remember crying a lot, <laughs> yeah. crying a lot. Every day I'm hiding from mm. my daughter and I'm crying. Her not okay. knowing, you know, my mom is mm. emotionally drained and she's struggling. And yeah, she's trying to figure pressure. out, how, yeah. you know, what, yes, what we're going to eat today mm. or what, what how we're going to yeah. do this or how we're going to do that, you know. And it was really bad. <laughs> it was really bad. Um, but I, I remember turning on this song by the Clark sisters. It was a brand, their brand new album that came out at that time, and it was called Broken to Minister. Mm. And I was like, okay, God, why you want me listening to this? And I listened to it, and it just explained, like, everything that you're going through, all of your struggles, all of those discouraging moments, it's breaking, you're in this brokenness so that you can minister to somebody else that's going to go through the brokenness as well later Jesus. on in life. Jesus. That's and right. you may not know right. who it's going to be, but it's going to happen. <laughs> so, Amen. You know, Amen. Yeah. And here's the beautiful so part about struggle. Where I'm at, yeah. Here's the beautiful part about struggle. We can't appreciate it at the time because, like you said, we're going through the inner turmoil of just having some spiritual survival to exist and to sustain us and to be kept. And not right. to give up and bit and bail out and quit and just throw our hands up and uh, give up. No. But after we're relieved and brought out, we have valuable experience of that like. And it's so true. And when we testify about where we've been, it penetrates anything else that someone has concocted um, that probably would normally be a barrier because we can't reach people that don't want to be reached. We reach people that are open right. for their own survival. And it's so true that what comes from the heart reaches the heart. I have talked to so many people that assumed I was just going to be like everybody else. I'm talking about that guy that was at the gas station that was hollering for a couple of cha uh, dollars or some change, and he got mm -hmm. a sermonette. And a testimony mm -hmm. And he stopped cold in his track 
because he realized he was talking to somebody that was just like him but had changed. So God allows us to go through all those dark, painful days to qualify us. Isn't it true that God doesn't call the qualified, that he qualifies the call? So unfortunately, that's right. there's some there's some pain that's associated with it. But when we get that pain and we get that great pain reliever, we can go higher. Just like woman of God, Kimberly Jackson is singing about it. That's right. That's right. That's what we want. My God, my God, we want to go higher, higher in you, not higher on our own. We ain't ego tripping. We just want you, Lord God, to take us to the place where you would have us to go. Sounds of my special guest on Shine Artist Spotlight, woman of God, Kimberly Jackson. You did the thing on me. Tell us about the creation of that song. I know you said you went through some things, but when you got down to, did you write this song? And if you did, tell us about some of the nuts and bolts of how the preparation took place. Uh, Yes. So uh, the great part about this is that I wrote this song actually 11 uh, years ago. Uh, So I was working in a warehouse, a a hot warehouse, a place where I did not want to be. For the rest of my mm. life, and I did not want to be stuck <laughs> in complacency. And right. so, 
I told God, God, I don't want to be in this place forever while I was on the assembly line. Mm. And while I was on the assembly line lifting heavy uh, stuff, <laughs> God gave oh, me Lord. these words. I asked him, I said, God, give me these words. I want to go higher mm. in you. That's all I could think of is I want to go higher okay. in you. And so he okay. gave me those words that was written, and I wrote it down, uh, everything down in the break room as soon as I got a break. <laughs> and, um, yeah, and so we uh, recorded it last year, last summer, actually, with uh, the producer that uh, that was used, that we had, that was there for me to, to take care of that, uh, to build that vision, Rob, uh, Roderick Bubba Dowling, um, an amazing producer right here in the city of Houston, and he created uh, the sound and built that vision for the record, and we recorded it in the manner of uh, three hours, a short wow. time, <laughs> background yeah, and lead, yeah. and yeah. we did what we had to do, and we released it November 15th of 2021, and I just actually made my one-year anniversary of Hyatt. This month, Come May on. your anniversary. Congratulations. So, yes. All right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Amen. So, I'm just excited. It's amazing. Amen. It's amazing to see Amen. how far the song has gone. Congratulations on your one year anniversary the release of that song. And I'm so glad that because I felt like you was almost about to have a flashback talking about being back on that uh, warehouse lifting them heavy boxes. I'm like, oh, Lord, I hope she don't back on me. But isn't it a good thing when no. God takes you from one? <laughs> Well, God takes you from one level yeah. to the next level, and you can appreciate yeah. even those trying times because without the storm in our lives, how would we know to fall in love and appreciate the beautiful sunshine? Without the pains and troubles that we go through, how would we know to be grateful for the freedom, for the restoration of that God? Woman of God, we uh, just salute you. We continue to for you and encourage you in Christ to continue to do those things that God has created you for, called you to, or ordained you for such a time as this. I appreciate it right now. With us. Share with us tech information, how you can be reached for booking, because there's going to be some uh, events coming up, concerts, women revivals, retreats, or what have you, and people are going to hear this broadcast, and they're going to want you to be a part of it. And then where your music can be downloaded. And then please share with my listeners all your social media contacts so that they can follow you on Snapchat, Instagram, Facebook, whatever you got going on. Yes. So you can find me on my Facebook page, Lady Kimberly Jackson, where you're able to be updated on all of the things that are going on there, um, as well as uh, my email I am Lady K Jackson at gmail.com is where you can email me for booking inquiries um, as well as my uh, booking flyer information is also on the Lady Kimberly Jackson Facebook page. You can follow me on I am Lady K Jackson 2020 on Instagram. You can download higher on iTunes. Uh, you can go to Spotify as well as Pandora, it's on YouTube, um, Amazon Music, all of the digital platforms. Um, my Twitter is Lady K Jackson 21 that you can also follow that page. And, and, of course, you can go check out the play, Unfinished Business, that I premiered okay. on with an amazing production on 2B TV. And also I have a new record. I have a record. Did post. <laughs> I have, um, I have just finished my new record, my new single <laughs> that okay. I have coming out, 2023, called yeah, God yeah, yeah. Will Do It. God Amen. He will, will do, it. Yes. do it. That's a testimony, Amen. all in itself. So tune Amen. into that because it will be coming out in the beginning of 2023. So, yes. yes, that's what's coming up next. Amen. Well, listen, we applaud you again. I thank you for being the bright and shining light that you are for Jesus and the wonderful gift and talented music ministry that you have. Keep doing what you're doing for Jesus so that God continue to pour out rich, abundant, and his choice is blessings for you 
and that teenage daughter that you're raising, as well as everybody that's associated with you in this kingdom collaboration for our Lord Jesus. Thank you for joining us. I can't wait for you to come back and play all that new music that you just got through talking about, and I promise you I will play it, and then I'll send you the archive, even if you're not a special guest. I'll send you any time I play gospel artist music, I make sure that I send them the archive show so that you all can get just due credit for all of your hard work and labor. People don't understand that singing is a ministry, just like preaching and teaching. There's different functions in the body, but it takes work and commitment for you all to be successful. So I thank you, woman of God. I bless you in Jesus. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Amen. Woman of God, Kimberly Jackson, y'all. Didn't she, didn't she dress up? Didn't she? She did. She blessed us so much. So she got so many things going on. I'm so proud of her. And I'm so proud of all of you anointed people of God that are out there laboring. Because our Lord Jesus has declared, he said that if we look out at the fields, we can see that the fields are white for the harvest already. He's not talking about wheat, grain, or corn. He's talking about souls that are ripe for the picking, if you will, for evangelism. And that's why God has given fire is gospel experience as the evangelistic outreach ministry here to honor God, to empower the people of God, and to reach to those that are still wondering if all of this God talk, Bible talk, religious talk, church talk is fulfilled. And we're here to testify and tell you and it show is. And then if you still have doubt, I will challenge to pray and ask God to say about it because God, what's up? You think he don't? Uh, I promise you, do. As well as man of God, Abraham D. Diamante, he's going to let you know he found God and you can too. I've been trying for so long to find someone like a friend to erase all my past, understand me. I've been trying for so long to find someone like a friend. Rest on my back, understand me But I say Get up, get up, get up Another person of cry to think of the past Get up, get up, get up Another day I've come, the sun is rising Get up, get up, get up Think on your thoughts, the time for moving has come
Hello, I am Woman of God, Helene Pooh Bolden, CEO of Pooh Studio Production and Promotion. And I want you to join me and the saints of God on a fabulous time of praise, worshiping, glorifying God on our 2023 Pooh's Gospel Carnival Cruise. We are in for a hallelujah great time of fellowship, uplifting, and kingdom collaboration. We are scheduled to sail out on August the 31st through September the 4th, 2023 for a fabulous four-day cruise to the Bahamas. The cabin cost is only $390.27 with shared roommates. Time is almost up to pay your $27 deposit by Monday, December the 12th, 2022 to reserve your space. First payment of $150 is due by Monday, May the 3rd, 2023, and then your balance by June the 17th, 2023. Please contact me, Helene Pooh Bolden, at 864-414-7551 or Nancy Henry at 864-353-4317 or go to our Facebook page. To review the 2023 Gospel Carnival Cruise um, contact information. And if you are a gospel artist, gospel group, choir, or gospel band and would like to ministry at this spirit filled event, Praising Across the Sea, please contact me, Helene Pooh Bolden, for registration 864 414 7551. This will be a life-changing experience for 2023, and you certainly don't want to miss it. And you are listening to Fire, the Gospel Experience, where the fire is moving, uplifting, unrestrained experience of biblical inspiration of gospel music. And I am inviting you to let the light of Jesus the Christ shine bright in your life. So by all means, keep it tuned in to fire the gospel experience where you are lifted, uplifted with the spirit and give you new strength. Be a blessing to your family, friends, and co-workers by telling them about fire on this station. It is all about the kingdom building called Ron E. Jefferson, fire radio host. 870-413-0220. Amen, amen. Thank you, woman of God. Helene Pooh Bolden, looking forward to getting my cruise on to the Bahamas in 2023 on that Carnival cruise ship. That gospel explosion extravaganza that's going to be going on from August the 31st, y'all, until September the 4th, 2023. You all need to go ahead and go ahead and put your $27 deposit down so that you can reserve that space. If you're a gospel, as you heard, woman of God, Helene Poole, just said, we're looking for y'all to be a part of that ministry. We want y'all to come on with y'all talented, gifted selves, anointed, and be a part of this gospel celebration as we uplift our God and share our ministry gifts together and just take over the whole carnival cruise, take over the whole ocean, take over the whole Bahamas, wherever we are. If you believe it can be so, it can be so. So I'm looking forward to that. And thank you, woman of God, Helene Poole Bolden, for inviting me to be one of the MCs. I am looking forward to meeting so many people that I have not had the pleasure of meeting in real life on this cruise. If I tag you, that means I'm looking for you to be a part of it. We are for your spiritual consideration embracing the book of Samuel, chapter 8, verses 7 and 8, for your spiritual consideration. And it reads, And the Lord said unto Samuel, Hearken unto the voice of the people, and all that they say unto thee. For they have not rejected thee, but they have rejected me, that I should not reign over them. Verse 8 says, according to all the works which they have done since the day that I brought them up out of Egypt, even unto this day, wherewith they have forsaken me and served other gods, so do they also unto thee. We're talking rejection here. We've all heard the cliche of how hurt people hurt people. 
But I also believe that it can be also said of reject people, reject people. There's just something that is and goes so deep like rejection that is so toxic that it contaminates our very soul. And guess what? In my Gomer Powell voice, surprise, surprise, surprise. It doesn't just affect us in humankind. Do you know that even the animal life can sense and know when they are being rejected? You ask how so? It all becomes apparently obvious by the actions that someone displays or doesn't display. When there is a shift or even sometimes a very subtle change, yes, it's true, that actions many times speak louder than words. First Samuel, our text for your consideration, 8 and 7 says, And the Lord said unto Samuel, Hearken unto the voice of the people, and all they say unto thee. For they have not rejected thee, but they have rejected me, and I should not reign over them. What is even so much more amazing than that is how this is true for our great creator, God. How can one who is omnipotent in every conceivable way be subject to rejection? First of all, because our immense worlds and universe creator has feelings and emotions that can and has been trespassed on, trespassed on by the very one that he created and created for a distinct purpose. Mike 6 and 8 bears it out. He has told you, old man, what is good. And what the Lord will require of you except to be just and to love and to diligently practice kindness, which is compassion, and to walk humbly with your God, setting aside any overblown sense of importance or self-righteousness. Don't you just love how the Amplified Version of the Bible takes us to a deeper understanding? Now, we... In our preoccupied minds of self-will and minimal self-reflection are too easily successful to forget that we are made in his image, in God's image. Genesis 1 and 26 says, made in his image and likeness. God has those very same emotions, y'all, that we have because he gave them to us for sensitivity through union and relationship. We're created to be sympathetic to what God feels by what we ourselves feel in our own identification. But time and time again, we've had more time than we have succeeded. We have failed. But if it were not for the extended grace and great loving kindness of our awesome God, none of us would be able to stand. The C part of Samuel chapter 8, verse 7 says, But they have rejected me, that I should not reign over them. Now, you can almost imagine the pain look on the Almighty One's face, who has done nothing but pour out his abundant and intended blessings for our prosperity, joy, and provision, which in turn we would extol great praise, worship, and adoration back to God, you would think. But the Old Testament believers simply led the abominable way that the children of Israel in our Lord Jesus' time. John 19 and 15 says, but they cried out, away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate said unto them, shall I crucify your king? The chief priest answered, we have no king but Caesar. Now, the sheer agony and pain of rejection that was heaped upon the humiliation and torture of our Lord Jesus endured. John 1.11 says he came unto his own, and his own received him not. Which I may digress at this time, because this leads me to another point. We continuously attempt to make God in our image, y'all. Some white people just want Jesus to look and be white. Some black people just want Jesus to look and be black. Some Asian people just want Jesus to look and be Asian. Some Latino 
Mexican, Hispanic born people just want God, Jesus to look Hispanic, Mexican, and Latino. But that would mean that those people in the Bible age were co-contributors to his execution by rejecting his rule over them. Think about it. If we want Jesus to be just like we are, the Bible says that he came unto his own and his own received him not. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm not trying to be in a crowd where we did not receive our promised Messiah. So I see that whatever race our Lord Jesus was and chose, which I believe to be like the Jewish people over in the nation of Israel, that demonstrates the divine love of God. We would expect Malcolm X and Martin Luther King and Mahatma Gandhi to sacrifice themselves for the cause of their own people. But the highest level of love is made when someone dares to die for others outside their racial identity. That is the higher love of God. John 15 and 13 says, no one has greater love, no stronger commitment than to lay down his own life for his friends. You tune in to fight it up with friends, y'all. We're talking about rejection. We're talking about feeling what God feels. And sometimes we don't even pay attention to that. Help us, Lord, to use the rejection that we ourselves have had to endure to be an encouragement to be more sensitive to your will. In other words, like one of God, Deborah Spears is saying, help us, Lord God, to be a vessel that you can use for honor.
said that the best ability is availability. Woman of God, Deborah Spears, is saying, God, I just want to be you by you. What a woman privilege that is. You're tuned in to Fire the Gospel Experience where we are giving you some spiritual consideration in the book of First Samuel chapter 8 verses 7 and 8 where we are discussing rejection. We've all been there. We all know what it feels like. So when the souls of men, women, and children have intently decided to separate themselves from the rule and reign of God who created us all, their very hearts, minds, and souls become breeding ground for every foul, dark, demonic influence that there is. And the proof of this is evident every time we turn on our local, national, and world news. The only difference is the immense, larger scale and degree of the heinous and despicable atrocities that are occurring. So, the ultimate guilt of mankind is rejection, rebellion, and even reveling in the separation of God, not realizing their detrimental contribution to the ongoing destruction and spiritual desolation that has become the norm and the lay of the land. Evil has persuaded many people to separate from God for the alternative of fully satisfying their own desires, which leaves them in great distress when realizing that in spite of all their efforts, that their soul is diminishing for lack of spiritual union, which is nutrition from God and God alone. Verse 8 says, according to all the works which they have done since the day that I brought them up out of Egypt, even unto this day, wherewith they have forsaken me and served of God, so do they also unto me. We've all had our own personal Egypt, habits, addictions, Mind traps that God delivered us from Just like he delivered the children of Israel From slavery Or been a slave in one way or another If not physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually Psalm 34 and 8 says Oh taste and see That the Lord our God is good How blessed, fortunate, prosperous And favored by God is the man Who takes refuge in him Because God has also declared in Genesis 6 and 3 the Lord said, my spirit shall not strive and remain with man forever because he is indeed flesh, sinful, corrupt, given over to sensual appetite. So let us not be found guilty of rejecting the will, way, and word of holy God, even as true believers. Remember, the free will gift that God gives us in creation is the greatest gift after salvation that we reciprocate. By giving him our newly transformed submissive will. We give it to God and we give it to God alone. Thank you, thank you, thank you for allowing me to share that inspirational word message about rejection, y'all. I want to thank my special guest, woman of God. I promise you, Daphne M. Hilton came in and blessed us with strong word and strong testimony, as well as woman of God, Kimberly. And then I shine out of spotlight You all are blessed women of God We'll leave y'all with this kind of word We are all like seeds Planted to be fruitful Into the fields Of wherever God chooses Y'all be blessed I want y'all to grow in the spirit And prosperity of God And God alone Listen I want to leave y'all with woman of God Paula Cooper Singing about Psalm 51 until next time, y'all be blessed in Jesus. Do what you do for the Lord, and I promise you the rewards will be plenteous and your soul will be eternally blessed.